Welcome to the first episode of Turbo Tributes. This is a series I'll basically be using as an excuse to review every single official Turbo Graphics game ever released in North America. For the very first episode, I want to focus on a game that I've always really enjoyed. Cybercore. It's a game that I've had in my library since I was a little kid, and was actually one of my very first video games I ever played. I was really into praying mantises when I was a little kid, so naturally I was super drawn to this game as soon as I saw one on the cover. Little did I know, not only would I be able to play one in the game, but the whole thing would be a huge love letter to the insect world. And I think that really makes it stand out in the shoot 'em up genre, even today. My personal nostalgia with the game aside, it's actually a really great game and doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it should. Cybercore has you playing Rad Ralph, who has been recently morphed into a chimera and sent to defeat the Hyper Insects to save humankind from annihilation. Works for me. The game has a power-up system not unlike other shooters, but here it's tied to color and insect type, all of which have their own strengths that become more apparent as you continue to upgrade them. The Hornet type shoots straightforward powerful lasers. The Mantis type, which I still choose most of the time to this day out of habit, has little shields which definitely come in handy. The Red Swallowtail type shoots onion rings, and the blue beetle type shoots big swastikas, I guess. This is a pretty decent variety, and I think most who play the game should be able to easily find one that they like and stick with it if they want. The only downside of upgrading all the way is that your ship does get pretty big, and that makes you a much bigger target. You can offset that a little bit by upping your ship speed with the select button, but there is still a trade-off here that you may or may not want to take depending on the situation you're in. I admit I wasn't even aware you could change your ship speed until I was in my 20s and decided to actually read the manual just out of curiosity. But just because I'm an idiot doesn't mean you have to be, so hit that select button if you feel like you need to up your speed. This is one of those shooters where you'll be shooting enemies in the air as well as bombing enemies on the ground, and Cybercore does a really good job of mixing those two enemy types pretty consistently throughout the game. In fact, some enemies start off on the ground but end up in the air if you don't kill them quickly enough. Even the bosses could be either type, and many of them require both bombs and regular firepower to take out, so they do keep you on your toes pretty well in that way. There are various power-ups you'll come across, like invincibility, one-ups, screen clears, you know the drill. Nothing really innovative in that area, but they do get the job done. At first, the game is a total cakewalk, which isn't too surprising as many old-school shoot-em-ups do start out that way, but Cybercore pretty much stays easy for well over half the game, and only really gives you a serious difficulty spike in the last two levels. It is a serious spike though, and it will be a shock to your system when you get to it. Some people find this sudden shift to be a negative for the game, and I get that, although it doesn't bother me. As you've probably gathered by now, the graphics and sound in Cybercore are great all the way around. The visuals are very nice for their time, with big enemy and boss designs, and plenty of variety. Each level is packed with unique enemies, and very few of them are reused in more than one level. Speaking of the levels, the designs of them are cool, but they can get a little bland here and there with lots of stretches of meh. And it definitely could have benefited from some parallax scrolling layers, which were in other games at this time. But in exchange for those concessions, the game runs buttery smooth and has almost none of the slowdown and flickering that many other Turbo games suffer from at one point or another. The sound, much like the graphics, is pretty great across the board. The music doesn't quite soar to the heights that Air Zonk or Soldier Blade music does, but it does get damn close at times with some really outstanding tunes. The fast-moving middle voices and the energetic melodies of the songs fit the spastic buzzing around of the enemies perfectly, and they will definitely get stuck in your head if you let them. Another plus is that your weapon firing sound effects don't overpower the music at all, which is something that other shooters can do, Gates of Thunder. So that's a pet peeve of mine that this game totally avoids. 
Cybercore is not a game you are likely to get recommended very often, as Blazing Lasers, Soldier Blade, and Raiden often dominate the Turbo Graphics shoot 'em up conversations, which makes sense as those games are awesome, but Cybercore is certainly in that top tier for me. And that's why it was an obvious choice to kick off my Turbo Tribute series. I really wish the designs of the levels matched the creativity and excellence of everything else. That really would have given the game that extra pop it needed to get into the upper ranks of Airzonk or Soldier Blade, but as it stands, it's got a cool look, precise controls, exceptional music, and a unique personality that gives a nice little twist to the top-down shooter genre. I can give Cybercore a very solid 8 out of 10. If you're a fan of the genre and want something a little different, you can't go too wrong with this one.